Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello. Last class we started failure mode and effect analysis. Today we continue it. The contents of today's presentation we will revisit what we have discussed in last class first and then I will give you another concept called how to uh, select the important or significant failure modes. Then last class we have discussed about that bottom up approach for system breakdown. Today I will give you the top down approach. Then the parameters for risk priority number calculation that is probability, severity and detectability. So, no, those qualitative uh, scale will be shown to you and then how you will document the total FMEA analysis that format will be given and finally, the calculated RPN will be used to prioritize the failure modes using parameter analysis that we will discuss. If you if you recall yesterday's that last lecture is what I have taken yesterday that what I have told you that failure mode means the ways the component of the system fails and then switch failure mode, motor failure mode, human failure mode and with reference to the compressor system fail different component failure modes you have seen. So, we, we are starting from that point. So, now so there can be a mul multiple failure modes, a large number of failure modes will be there. So, will you go for failure mode and effect analysis of all the failure modes or is there a way to decide that which are the failure modes or which are the component failure modes that will be important to consider for, for detailed FME analysis. So, you, you put certain questions, questions are like this, will a failure of the system result in intolerable or undesirable loss? You have your big plant, big organization, you may, you can divide it into the system, several systems, then system to subsystem, then up to component level. Now, when you are talking at a, at a particular system, then when the if the failure of that system result in significant loss, then that is basically the point of concern. If it is not, forget. If it is yes, then you divide the system into subsystems. And and then you all again ask question will the will a failure of the subsystem result in intolerable undesirable loss if no document and end the analysis if yes then divide the subsystem into assemblies put similar question and in this manner you go on breaking down like divide each subsystem into assemblies will failure of the assembly result in a no, then end. If it is yes, divide each assembly to sub assembly. Again, if the uh, if a sub assembly will not result into um, any lo significant loss stop and in this process you proceed and finally, divide each sub assembly to component and sub component to uh, that, that component, those are the component you select and then further you component to part also that breaking up 
breaking down is required. So, that means, it is essentially essentially those components which result into loss that loss may be at the subsystem level at the component level or at the system level. If, if any component failure has system level loss then it is very very important component. So, last class the system breakdown concept we have discussed with reference to bottom up approach where the where we have shown you that system, subsystem, sub subsystem then component to part. You can go for functional approach in case of function there will be system have different functions and then different sub functions and then sub sub function up to component level functions. Okay that way you, you proceed. With reference to this, I am not explaining this further because you know this system we have explained is in last class. With reference to this, what is the functional breakdown you see? Compressed air system, what is the purpose of this compressed air system? Provide compressed air at 100 psig, remove moisture and contamination from air, these are the two things to be now, when we talk about compre provide compressed air, these are the these are these are the sub function. So, function sub function intake air intake, compress air, contain air, distribute air. So, air intake, compress, contain and distribute the difference you see intake here this one and then contain and distribute here. So, provide compressed air, remove moisture, contain compressed air. So, these two. So, we have broken down into subsystem level and then you see that provide compressed air will require first that you must have the compressed air, compress it and then distribute contain and distribute. And removal of moisture is another function where remove moisture and remove contaminants. So, accordingly you see the differences are taken place. Okay. Now, you may what you will do when you go for um, FME analysis, you may start with that suppose distribute air, during distributions what are the different ways this will fail, that will be the failure mode, functional failure mode. The methodology part I have discussed in last class, but today our primary focus is that how to find out the severity, probability and detectability and calculation of RPM. So, what is required? You required to have some scale. So, scale for measurement, scale for measurement. it can be objective, it can be subjective. So, to we will see the some subjective scale. So, what are those things? So, let us repeat it, we will be providing you scale for measuring severity, which is basically determined based on the effect of failure mode we will be giving you scale for probability of occurrence, which will be determined by the potential causes of failure mode and detectability of that failure mode that depending on the, de the that design uh, current conditions and design verification process. So, I should not repeat this again. This is compressor related failure modes, pipe related failure mode, control relief valve. We have considered only compressor subsystem and we are considering that bottom up approach that is hardware approach. So, how many failure if I we are interested only in this compressor then how many failure modes are there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 failure modes. Okay. So, with reference to compressor, 
we will show you all the calculations. Now, first one is the probability. So, this probability we are giving you basically 10 point scale and it is taken from a from a paper uh, I think which paper is this one I think in the reference you will get it that um, basic FEMA no then Goodman management mindset but universities Wheelwright and Clark this one the third one. So, we have taken from this ok. So, you can go through this and you may find out something more. What is happening here? We are saying that the probability of occurrence is having 10 different values means 10 point scale we are using here 10 point scale. So, the it is basically in order of probability of occurrence if it is 1 this is basically remote probability if it is 10 certain probability and in between the degree of occurrence the probability of occurrence is less. So, remote probability 1 low probability 2 moderate probability 4 3 or 4 depending on the situation you have to give moderate prob high probability 5 and 6 moderate high probability very high probability 8 and 7 failure is almost inevitable 9 and certain probability 10. So, these are all desc subjective description, but you must have some reference so that you can how to put value 1 or 10 this is what is the uh, failure with reference to potential failure rate it is given what it is given the one means failure almost never occurs no one remember last failure. Low probability of occurrence failure occurs once per year or one in thousand operation trials failure occurs once in every three months or one in 500 trials failure occurs one in once per month or one in hundred once per month uh, per week 150 every 3 to 4 days 1 by 10 at least once a day 1 by 5. So, you must have this experience and when you are uh, doing FMEA analysis for your system whenever you are considering component you see that what is the failure rate under which category it is falling. If you find that it is basically that failure occur once per month or 1 in 100, so you can put 6 or 5 depending on that means if you if you think that no no it is uh, higher side means it is obviously that 1 in 100 uh, then 6 or you think that no it may be little less give it 5 because it is a subjective one. So, for a particular failure mode you will first find out what is the probability of occurrence it may be 6. So, failure mode 1 probability of occurrence is 6 p is 6. Then what you require you just think the example here for compressor these are the failure modes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 failure modes. Now, what is the probability that external leak will occur? So, we are giving it moderate. What is the probability that external rupture will occur? 1. What is the probability that fails to start? Again moderate. So, like this depending on the on the system knowledge operation knowledge. So, you are finding out that these probabilities with reference to this scale given. So, for all the failure modes reference to compressor 
their probability is now defined, probability value is quantified though subjective, but we are putting a numerical value between 1 to 10. Then effects, what is effect? Effect is the severity, if a failure mode occurs, what is going to happen to the system? So, here also we from the same reference we have taken 10 point scale 1 no danger to 10 extremely dangerous. In between slight danger, low to moderate danger, moderate danger, dangerous, very dangerous like this. Then what is the description? Description is given here. That means no danger means failure causes no injury or and has no impact on the system. Okay. So, maybe at the beginning you, you may eliminate some of the things while selecting that what are the modes you will consider, but even then something will remain and in that case if you find that the thing is like this no danger put 1. Like 10 failure could cause death of a customer, so it is a fatality case, so you give it is a extremely dangerous put 10 in between you find out. Sometimes what happen let it may be a 6 failure causes minor injury with some customer dissatisfaction and or major safety pro system problems. Okay. So, need not be uh, that it, it is it need not require that you will follow this particular scale 10 point scale there can be possibility that you may go for 5 point scale 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, 5. Because ten, when you are using 10 point scale, it so many combinations are there, so many minor differences will be there from one level to another level, you may get confused. So, in that case, it is, it is better to go for 5 point scale. If you find that the the people, the experts who are basically or the team members are more comfortable in 5 point scale, then you take 5 point scale. So, what will happen you have to that means your so much that means the, the breaking into the 10 different labels will not required. Okay, you may start with your slight danger, moderate danger and then very dangerous, extremely dangerous and then lower one may be the no danger. So, five, 5 point scale possible, 3 point scale possible also, 7 points will possible also. So, you can create your own scale and, and uh, give some severity as well as probability and detectability values. So, with reference to our example, external leak does not produce compressed air at desired pressure and volume if there is external leak. So, this is the effect. So, it is it is low to medium, so we are giving 4. External rupture you see property damage, injury and death this is a huge one. So, effect is 10. Like operates at degraded performance does not produce compressed air at desired pressure and volume like this. So, your severity is 4. Hmm. So, you have to know that the occurrence of a mode, what level of loss to the system is going to happen and accordingly you put the value from the 10 point scale given. Then detectability. Detectability case, if the failure mode is easily detectable, then what is the, what will be the value? The value will be low. So, when you move up, I mean if detectability decreases, then your risk increases. So, here detectability high this is detectability and this is risk. 
Detectability increases, risk decreases, detectability decreases, risk increases. So, that is why what happened? We have used the reverse scoring when detectability is almost certain, you are putting the rating 1, when it is no chance of detection, you are getting putting 10 and in between similarly very high, high, moderate, remote, very remote, no chance like this and the description is given here, when no chance of detection, there is no known mechanism for detecting the failure. Like suppose you think of um, that uh, any, any any system where suppose different gases are used, there may be leakage of gas and you have no dete detector sensors put there which will ultimately give you an alarm that there is a leakage. So, then what will happen? The leakage will not be known. So, that that kind of mechanism. For example, in the pressure tank system, whether over pressure conditions can be detected? Yes, because alarm is there and pressure gauge is there, but suppose you think that there is no alarm, no pressure gauge, what will happen? That over pressure condition is not detected which may ultimately lead to the tank rupture, this is the extreme, extreme failure, uh, dangerous failure mode. So, similarly almost certain there is automatic shut off or constraint that prevent failure, okay, it will not happen, even if that, uh, that failure more, uh, the system is such that, that the, the failure is prevented. Okay. So, we have defined probability, we have defined severity and we have defined detectability. Now, external for the system compressed air system, external leak detectability high, rupture almost certain, fail structure like this. Suppose operate degraded performance, it is difficult to detect. So, accordingly the, the detectability ratings are given. So, then what happened? It simply shows that you have given um, P, S and D, it is known now. P S D known now. What is P? P is probability, severity, detectability now known. Now, what do you require? You require to compute R P N. What is R P N? R P N is probability times severity times detectability. So, R P N is something like this. R P N is this. So, you will you will buy if it is probability. So, with increase in R P N probability RPN increases, with increase in severity RPN also increases, but with increase in detectability RPN is decreasing. That is why we have used the reverse, reverse scoring here. Here if it is almost certain you are giving 10, here also 10, but here you are giving 1. So, okay. so for different failure modes, probability, severity, detectability given, you multiply. 4 into 4 into 4 is 64, 10, 7 into 4, 28, 112, 30, 168. So, whose RPN is maximum here? Operates at degraded performance, which is 160. So, if you do not calculate RPN, if you simply think that this is the failure mode where you should concentrate, then obviously, you will first say that this is the place to be concentrated because it is huge severity. But <coughs> when you have seen the probability that the chance is very less because the design is with high safety factor it is designed. So, probability is less. So, that means it is already taken care of and as a result the RPN value is low. But when we talk about that operates at degraded performance, its severity is comparatively low, but its probability is high and detectability is also low. 
So, that the, that means the probability high probability with low detectability creates maximum problem here and as a result R p n is R p n is more that means ultimately loss to the system because, uh, because of this failure mode is much more compared to others. So, your efforts actions require here. Okay. Another one operates too long that is also a issue. Third one is the fails of while running an issue and external leak also an issue because these are having high RPN values. <clears throat> so, you <coughs> know how to calculate RPN. Now, how what is the documentation? The documentation part is important. See that you have to point out that failure mode and dependency for what system, subsystem, and compound level, what level you are doing. Then you describe it. Suppose you have taken let it be component level, then you write down the name of the component or subsystem level, name of the subsystem, and write down the comments. Usually, FMEA at the component level we do when we go for say that hardware based break up breakdown that is bottom up approach. But if you go by functional case then maybe what will happen a subsystem function also you can take and accordingly you give comments, but that functional breaking down um, although requires some uh, some times, but it is difficult to uh, find out the failure modes and the other parameters. Okay. So, then uh, you just you just uh, you see that there are 11 uh, different items that is to be filled up the component which uh, whatever you, cho you have cho chosen either component subsystem system what function it will perform. And then what are the failure modes? There can be many failure modes. You have seen in the compressor, a compressor system it is per, what is the function? Compress the air to the desired pressure. Then what are the failure modes? There are 7 failure modes. For every failure mode, failure mode 1, what is the effect? What are the causes? And what are the current control you have to write? And then accordingly PSD will be written and RPN value will be calculated and that is what you have seen. Okay. And then you require corrective actions. If if suppose RPN is just uh, for operates at degraded performance, that RPN we have found out that is 168, and we also found out the detectability 7, this one 6, and this one 4. Now your recommended action will be where? You, what is the recommended action? You want to reduce it, reduce it to lower values. It is possible if you if you reduce this value, this value, or this value. Which one is maximum? Here seven. So it may so happen if you know the current controls, and if you if you have the system knowledge, design knowledge, you may find out that the there can be a possibility of putting a sensor or some kind of uh, inspection scheme so that the detectability part that it is operating at lower performance can be improved maybe it can be improved to 3. So, that is what is the recommendation what you should do so that detectability will be improved. Similarly, this you may require to improve it to 3. So, what you should do so that the probability of occurrence will be less. So, then 3 into 4 into 3 then this will be 3 into 4 12 into 3 36. So, RPN value will be reduced. So, by corrective action means this your action may be hardware, software, humanware or may be administrative may be engineering control and this can be triggered to probably reducing probability, reducing severity or improving detectability. So, these are the, these are the clues. Now, where you should focus? You focus on where the value is high that there is the possibility for improving. If you find that no there is no possibility that the detectability can be improved then it will remain 7. Then it may be possible that probability 3 and maybe severity can be finally, reduced to 2. So, 
something like this. So, by recommended action we means preventive and mitigative. Preventive actions what will happen? It will it will improve the probability means reduce the probability of occurrence. Mitigative actions reduce the severity of occurrence and detectability, detectability part is primarily in the preventive side. So, it will help you in detecting that fail uh, it is it is it will help you in detecting that failure mode occurs. So, that means it is in the mitigative side. Failure mode has occurred immediately take actions. So, the action then you find out the action now where the action if action taken then this value will change now 6 change to 3, 4 remain 4 and 7 change to 3. So, your final RPN is 36. So, you can add you know, something like remarks here whether this is taken place suppose it is closed that means this action has been identified and action has been taken accordingly this reduction is achieved and it is closed. Okay. So, this is basically the purpose. So, when the for your own system there will be several component and several failure modes it is a big list will be prepared. Now, another important issue is that as I told you that where to concentrate that prioritization of failure mode. So, that means once you calculated the RPN you can do this kind of bar chart. So, here 168, 112 like this in, in decreasing order of RPN and then you create a cumulative uh, value chart and then what will happen it will ultimately gives you that uh, what is the um, this one actually uh, this you, you have to see this one in order to understand this. So, here although RPN values although it is said, but from percentage wise we will be interested in 80 percent cases suppose 80 percent is this. So, that mean that mean this these three failure modes, these three failure modes are having uh, having 80 percent of the overall to total risk RPN values. So, your concentration will be first here, here and here, maybe here followed by here, followed by here. Okay. Someone may say that this is also high value, suppose if we want to cons consider this Suppose, if we consider then it is basically 30 percent, this is a 30 percent case. <coughs> if we consider this, what will happen? You are going like this. So, 90 percent. Suppose, you want to see that 90 percent cases, then this will also be considered. Now, that is what is the what is the use of this chart. So, this chart the cumulative value chart this one percentage chart known as Pareto chart. So, that means here we have what we are saying although there are 7 failure modes, but 3 failure modes are creating 80 percent of the problem the risk issues from the risk point, point of view these 3 failure, failure modes are contributing to 80 percent of the risk okay, where, where risk is RPN risk parity number. So, I hope that you got failure modern effect analysis. So, you just uh, just to recapitulate first is what I say that that you must have system knowledge, design knowledge, hazard knowledge and and other knowledge with experience. Then there will be system breakdown is important. There will be by either hardware approach or software approach. So, it is usual hardware approach or functional approach, functional approach hardware approach. Then hardware approach is easier one, it will ultimately leads to component level for comp um, comp every component you find out the failure modes. So, find out failure modes. Now, 
whether the component failure is important or not there is a process given to you. So, th from that process you may ignore some of the components or system or subsystem and then what happen once you have the failure modes the probability severity and detectability you find out this this will be found out if you have the system knowledge design knowledge hazard knowledge so what happen probability actually from the uh, from the cause it basically if you know the causes of failure fa occurrence of failure mode then it will help you in finding probability severity from effect point of view and detectability that how whether you are able to detect the failure mode or not then uh, everything can be quantified but it is it is as uh, it is a uh, practice level issue and you cannot wait for quantification so better quantification so what you do you will use subjective quant scale subjective scale is used so in this subjective scale tens point scale can be used five seven point can be used five point three point but usually either five point scale or tens point scale are used use this scale and then what you do what you do find out the compute rpn and based on rpn then you prioritize rpn and then you take you take action action on priority basis and documentation is important because after action taken your rpn value should be and properly document okay now, FMEA can be design FMEA, can be process FMEA, can be operation mm -hmm. FMEA. So, FMEA can be used in different uh, time. So, it is very powerful, powerful but simple technique to understand, but it requires team game to complete it. Okay. Thank you very much.